The Most Beautiful Tree in the World by Wonder Books Incorporated. Andy, Andy, Ellen stopped in the yard and waited for an answer from her brother. Suddenly a shower of snow fell upon her head. She turned toward the large spruce tree behind her and saw Andy peering between the drooping branches. She scooped up a midden full of snow and chased after him. Round and round the tree they ran, laughing and shouting so gaily that they didn't hear the humming motor till it was directly overhead. Then they looked up to see what was there. Oh, boy, cried Andy, a helicopter, a real one. The helicopter circled the giant evergreen twice and then headed toward New York, whose skyscrapers were far beyond the hills. Andy and Ellen raced to the house where their father was waiting for them at the door. Daddy, Daddy, shouted Andy, we just saw a helicopter. It flew right around our big spruce. What do you suppose it was doing? asked Ellen. Well, it's hard to say, children. Let's talk about it while we eat dinner, their father said. He was taking care of them while their mother was in the hospital. In a few days, she would come home with a new baby brother for Andy and Ellen. As they sat down at the table, their father asked, Now what was this about a helicopter? I think the man in the helicopter just wanted to look at our big tree because it's so beautiful, Ellen said. It's like a great big Christmas tree, isn't it? It may look like a Christmas tree, Andrew answered quickly, but it will never be one because we're not ever going to cut it down, right, Daddy? I don't think there's much danger of it ever becoming a Christmas tree, Andy's father reassured him. It's too large. Besides, we all love it too much. Just then, the telephone rang. A few minutes later, their father came back. Well, Ellen, he said, you were right. The man in the helicopter was admiring our tree. He called to say that he wants to buy it. You didn't sell it, did you? Andy asked. No, son, I didn't sell it. And we won't either, unless we all agree that's what we want to do. I told the man to come out tomorrow and talk to us about it. In his helicopter, Dad? Yes, Andy, it will land right in the back of the house. When the children came home from school the next day, the helicopter was landing in the pasture. As the pilot climbed out, he called, Hi there! The children rushed up to greet the pilot. Then their father came along too and said, Well, Mr. Judson, as I told you last night, we think we have the most beautiful tree in the world. Nothing can make us sell it unless there is a good reason for it. I can understand that, Mr. Brooks, the pilot answered. Have you told the children why I want to buy it? No, I've left that for you. Well, said the pilot to Andy and Ellen, I want to buy it for a Christmas tree, a special Christmas tree, to be set up in Rockefeller Center in New York for everyone to enjoy. What do you think now? What's Rockefeller Center? asked Ellen. Oh, I know, cried Andy. That's where we went last year to see the great big tree that was covered with colored lights. Don't you remember, Ellen? Where the people were ice skating down below the tree? Oh, yes, it was so beautiful. Mr. Judson smiled and said, Just think, Ellen. More than a million people will see your tree at Rockefeller Center. Nearly 50 million will see it on television. You'll see it, too, and share it with them. But it will still be your tree, because you are the only ones who have watched it grow. Ellen looked at Andy, and Andy looked at her. Then they both looked at their father. Andy said, Well, Daddy, we agree, if you and Mother do, too. We agree, Mr. Brooks said. The tree really has lived the best years of its life with us, and we should be ready to share it with others.
The next day, a crew of men started cutting down the big evergreen. They attached a cable high in the trunk so the crane could lower the tree gently. They trussed up the branches so that none would be crushed. Then they put the tree in the back of a big truck, tied it down with ropes, and drove away. Andy and Ellen were sad at first to see the tree go, but they knew they would love seeing their tree in Rockefeller Center. Finally, the great day came. The children climbed excitedly in the car to drive to the city with their father. It was a long ride and a cold one. But when they stood on the sidewalk looking up their great tree and the many lights it had all over it, nothing else mattered. Their father took them to see the tree again the next day. They loved looking at their stupendous Christmas tree and watching the skaters below. They loved seeing other people admire the tree and they liked watching an artist paint it. But when they got home, they felt a little sad to see only an empty space where the big spruce had been. Then two days before Christmas, there was something even more exciting to think about. Mother was coming home. Annie met her at the door. Hi, Mommy, he called excitedly. I'm so glad you're home. Did you bring the baby? Ellen was close at his heels, but both stopped short as the mother let them see what she was carrying in her arms. Here he is, she said, smiling. Your baby brother. They all gathered around the sleeping baby. Then their father said, and now I have a surprise for you all. Look outside. Ellen ran to the window. Oh, Andy, come quick. Look, mother, shouted Ellen. Some men have brought a little evergreen tree, and they're planting it in our yard, near where the big one was. Everyone hurried to the window. Mr. Brooks smiled at the pleasant looks on his children's faces. You see, he explained, when I sold the spruce to Mr. Judson, he promised to plant a new tree in its place. It, too, may grow up to be one of the most beautiful trees in the world. It already is, said Andy and Ellen happily as they looked at the little tree standing in the yard.